Welcome to Politics Done Right. I'm here with Monica Garcia. Monica Garcia is with... Stand Up America. We are a community of 2 million progressives from across the country. We're in every state and every congressional district. Mm -hmm. And we're working to pass common sense democracy reforms. Now, in these times where we have many times Republicans are trying to kind of uh, garner the market on, on voters for things that don't that, that's out of their interest. How are you all making a difference? Yeah. Um, so we are supporting um, democracy efforts in different states. Mm -hmm. There are states that are pushing to expand voting, mm -hmm. um, to bring more people into the fold, mm -hmm. um, and uh, restore voting rights, for example, for people who were formerly incarcerated that happened in Minnesota mm -hmm. um, recently. They also passed a big democracy package that makes it easier for folks to vote. So mm -hmm. while many Republican states are trying to restrict the right to vote, um, there are others, and people should feel hopeful about this. Mm -hmm. There are others, Minnesota recently, New Mexico recently, are trying to make it easier. And we that's something that we should be excited about. Now, um, I, I get that, you know, let's say the states that we consider blue states are able to do that. Mm -hmm. are, are you able to get some sort of a work done in the red states where that practice of denying people the ability to vote easily is mm -hmm. done? Are you able to... Uh, to find approaches to get around it in those states? Are you helping people, let's say, register to vote or getting around the hoops that stop them from voting? Yeah, so what we have been doing in different states is uh, defense work, so lobbying folks in um, or lobbying lawmakers in those states that are trying to restrict the right to vote mm -hmm. and getting our members involved in uh, you know, calling their members of, of um, or their local representatives mm -hmm. um, to stop those. And I mean, there have been efforts that uh, have been stopped in Alabama. Mm -hmm. the, uh, our community of there was um, calling folks, but there's also like a big movement within those states mm -hmm. that are like used to fighting those fights. Um, and they were successful this year. In, in other um, states like Florida, Florida passed uh, very restrictive law that makes it harder for mm -hmm. third party organizations exactly to mm -hmm. register people to vote. And as we know, those organizations often are the ones that are registering lots of voters of color. Mm -hmm. um, but and in that um, respect, there are other folks working uh, through the legal system to challenge those. Um, and uh, I think it was just this week, mm -hmm. um, a uh, judge uh, paused parts of that Florida law. They sure did. Yeah, yeah. they sure did. Now, um, how are you guys funded? Because, you know, I mean, every I guess the big thing right now is how these different organizations that are trying mm -hmm. to do good, especially the ones that are considered doing the progressive things are funded or, 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 or is it through websites? How are you funded? Um, so part of it is through... Um, through donations mm -hmm. um, at, you know, if you sign up for, um, to receive our emails at standofamerica.com, but we're very fortunate in that our founder has, you know, put in his own, um, you know, he put his money where his mouth is, because mm -hmm. he truly cares about these issues. Um, and so um, with that and supplemented, obviously with, you know, generous mm -hmm. donations from either the public or, or um, donors uh, we've been able to support in-state partners. No, that is great because that one of the biggest problems we have in, in the movement to get people more engaged is in fact funding yeah. that you have a, I don't want to say a Santa Claus, but a good a good donor. It's good, a good citizen. A good citizen. Yeah. I think it, it is it is so important. Now, uh, this election coming along, 2024, mm -hmm. Uh, it's been sort of scary to a lot of people because uh, we've seen a whole lot of these legislatures actually effectively pass laws and we have a Supreme Court that isn't conducive to make these changes. Later on today, we're going to speak to one of your cohorts on, on the Supreme Court, but uh, what specifically can you say about 2024 that should, shouldn't give anybody pause about, you know, going out there and do it? What can we do right now to, to, to mitigate all what these red states are doing? Yeah, and I mean, I think getting involved in uh, your local and state fights is critically important because they are the ones passing the laws that determine, you know, really who gets to vote next mm -hmm. year um, or who has that ease to vote next year. 
Um, and so, you know, visiting standupamerica.com or, or going to local organizations that do this work is going to put us in a good position um, to vote next year. Well, that, that is so important. Now, you have a you have a stellar career. You work with some of the big wheels out there on the Hill. Tell us a little bit about that, because I want folks to understand that, you know, we have a lot of good people out there doing good work like yourself. Yeah. Um, so I worked on Capitol Hill for nearly a decade. Um, I worked uh, first started off as a junior staffer working with a, you know, um, Democratic leader, um, Harry Reid mm -hmm. uh, in the Senate. Um, and I worked for a few other folks, including uh, Senator Durbin um, and uh, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. You know, I mean, th that, that's a good, that, that, that was a hell of a start because I tell you what, um, they were, they are also champions for things like voting and the others. So it was great having yeah. you. Before we close, anything would you like to add to, to the commentary? Yeah, um, I'd say that people, <laughs> People often get discouraged mm -hmm. about the state of our political affairs, but there are so many good stories across the country of people um, fighting for to expand voting rights, to get their um, issues, the issues that they care about across, and they're winning in, um, you know, in California in recent years, restoring voting rights to uh, formerly incarcerated people. Um, in, in New York, New York. Well, I think it was last year passed a voting rights act. And so, like, the pressure that people put on their lawmakers, it really works. I mean, working in Congress, like, when folks would call into the office, mm -hmm. constituents would call, the members pay attention. Oh, so they really do listen to those calls. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, the, the, the folks at the front desk, mm -hmm. they go back and they report to people. You know, we've gotten so many calls on mm -hmm. this issue, something that we should be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And they really want to hear from their constituents, especially if you are a constituent, if you live in their district, if you live in their state, um, in, in the case of senators, they're listening. Excellent. That's nice, Noel. Look, Ms. Garcia, thank you so kindly for being here thank on for Politics Done me. Right. And thank you for the work that you're doing. It's very important work. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share.